Well, everybody, we're um, ready to return. And um, our next uh, speaker is, uh, is uh, Kei Yon Son. And she is the head of the jewelry program at the Nova Scotia College of Art and Design University. She, uh, to my mind, has always worked with beauty, with um, creating ideas. And uh, I said to her that uh, uh, I felt that she worked with research and that she was often at kind of innovative leading edges of technology. And she responded that um, it wasn't really about the research, that it was about having the vision and then finding ways to fulfill it. So um, please, okay. Thank you. It's a great pleasure, a great honor to, to be here. And um, I just wanted to talk about just my work, how my work was evolved. Everybody knows they, uh, yeah, uh, they, I immigrate to Canada. I don't know whether everybody knows, so I'll just talk about it a little bit about my background. And um, uh, I started at BFA in in Korea, and then wanted to do a little bit more. I, I just talked about it a little bit, but anyway, I will. I will just talk about the uh, how educational system uh, impact on the uh, development of my work when I was a student, and also uh, also to now because since I'm in educational system, so that's what I'm going to talk about it. So I grew up in Korea in the 60s and 70s when Korean education system was modeled after American education system. So university level at art education, especially in craft, they were all aligned with the biohouse education model, particularly the Korean government see craft education as a good tool to educate designers in craft medium rather than maker. So school projects always focus on designing objects that have a function. Uh, rather than personal expressions, applying design principle, using certain material or medium, learn skills, rather than exploring that what that material does, and then techniques. Even today, you may find beautiful work from Korea, most of work from Korea students, craft person, are well, well made, really well made, well proportioned, beautiful, but there's a lack of something, that's how I find, and that's how I, how I felt at that time still. I was exposed to work being done in states in late 70s during my senior year, and it was an eye-popping experience. Uh, so free, and uh, there are lots of personal expression. And I, I, in my uh, undergraduate work, I never really thought that the uh, uh, craft could do that. And always there is a, uh, something, you know, you have to design it, certain cups, you have to design it, teapot, you have to design it this. It's a making process, it wasn't that important. So in 1780s, uh, uh, the whole Korean society looked toward the Western cultures and basically idolized them, I did. And precisely the reason I went to state for an MFA degree to learn about up-to-date trend in jewelry, metal, and just know them and what they are doing. And I wanted to do that too, what they are, exactly what they are doing. Uh, as the title as this talk indicates, my work have been developed from my own emotional responses to certain people, environments, and situations. This sake cup actually got me a second prize for National Sterling Silver Competition while I was in master's program. But in, in deep in mind, I was, I mean, it's a great to have a word, but in deep inside of me, oh, not again. And it, again, I just made it a functional, functional, functional piece. It's, a, it's a well made, but that's not what I wanted to do. And it was easier process designing a functional project, but I was totally, I was just totally lost to figure it out how to do visual, how to use visual elements in, with metal, in metal to express my emotions, which that was I really want to do. So there was quite a struggle to get there. But I think I finally got it toward the last year last year of my MFA third year. These two vessels were made in final year. 
And visual elements in, in these two were similar. Like there's a ball shape and those lines and that. But approach was quite different. The top, okay. <laughs> The top left the titled the circuitous line was to create a just visual tension using linear elements created by structure of ball. The, in the bottom, for waiting and waiting, the ball shape and linear elements were used to express my own uncertain feeling of as a young adult at the beginning of a stage of my life. Uh, I was then 20, around 25, something like that, around that age. Linear elements could be used to say more, uh, express something, combining with inherent holding power of the ball. This piece made me realize the process of making could be a personal journey as well. Uh, housebound, this is 1996, expresses a feeling of a confinement housewives can ha often have. Hammered foam, copper, and enameled. Captured, 1996, expressing limitation but also comfort safety of being a married woman. Hammered foam, enameled steel and silk. With this direction of work, I could definitely say I have influenced by discourse of mid-80s metal and jewelry in states. I guess we all tried to push the boundary of craft at that time. Uh, exhib exhibition titled like As Good As Gold, also Metal Smith Makes Sculpture, uh, the evidence of a trend of 80s in craft medium. When I moved to Halifax, I noticed many people picking up small beach stones and not throwing them away at the end of the day, rather than they put, rather they put them on window sill to recall memories associated with the beach stones. To me, that small stone is a vessel to hold your feeling and attachment. So I used, so I wanted to create that. That was really great. I want to make a ball. So I used enamel to mimic beach stone textures and the small silver insert was the place to put your feelings. This piece led me to look into Korean culture associated with the small rocks and praying. And okay, in the old days in Korea, women used to pray in front of a big rock, usually near a well, in a water well. And they pray for their family, their children's husband's well-being. Uh, Buddhism was so very integrated um, in Korean Korean's daily life. I had to use the lotus flower to for the praying part of it. The wooden tray represents the stroke of in Chinese letter meaning water well, and raised copper enamel chasing the pose technique are employed. I was quite pleasantly surprised that my experience in the beach stone in Nova Scotia led me to become curious about one aspect of a Korean culture. Once I finished this piece, it got me thinking about symbols associated with the praying and wishing. So that's a really good part of it. And before I designing an undergraduate um, uh, the um, uh, training, there was no room to really think about it for the, your own things. Uh, this piece uh, called Wishing Two, I inserted a symbol of a Christianity cross-shaped uh, form on the, on the stone-shaped bowl. And this time I used the Western religious symbol for the tray to hold the vessel. I filled the tray with a fine sand to associate with the beach and give a sense of softness because when you wish for something, it comes from inside. It is a calm and reflective act. Once I used the rotors and cross shapes for wishing series, I was curious how many symbols out there related to benedictions. Some people pointed out, actually at this time I was working uh, at NASCAD full time, and some people point out that availability of a grant, when I mentioned it about wanting to visit Korea to know about more about symbols using craft object. Through this work, I understand the value of research. I applied a few findings in my work from research on meaning of decor decoration in Korean craft object. It is quite a shame, actually, now think of it, that I didn't understood why certain decorations were used on certain objects. For a long time, 
I mean, for a long time, I ignored them. Until this time, there was about, this is about 1996, around 97. For a long time, I ignored them. Thought that they were just old style motif and decorations. And it's a Korean system, as I say, that uh, it was modeled after Western uh, United States. We learned uh, Western, Western art history first, and we didn't learn the Korean art history. And uh, I guess it's, I'm talking about 1970s, so I think that it has, hope it has changed. But anyway, that environment, decorative pattern in traditional textiles and furniture and ceramics were considered not worthy of study. That's what I thought. That's why I was so ignorant, ignorant about my own thing. And through this research, I started to notice these symbols in many Korean objects in my household. And pine tree rocks, a turtle for long life, swastikas for 10,000 times of praying, etc. So I find the knowledge from research help artists to develop the body of work more deeper. With this experience, I really study, I mean, personal experience makes really strong, um, you know, a strong belief, and then I find that it's a, a strong tool to teach, I think, because you really have strong feeling for it. So I start to emphasize the importance of various forms of research in my classes. I made this wishing stone for my dear friend, whom I wish for her fortune and happiness in her life. It's also centered those two words, is happiness and uh, fortune. The size of these wishing stones are about being able to hold them with your two hands. So that's what I like the size of it, because it's so intimate. And each, each pieces I make it, I really like that those intimate size of it. Um, I took this. I took these images at one of the Buddhist temple in Seoul during my research trip. A white and black lantern were used to wish deceased people's well-being in the heaven. And then dotted pattern are the shadow cast by the lantern. And this one, this image is cut. In a, it really a uh, big impact on me. You can see why. This empty vessel series is a result of a personal search to express the intangible emotions associated with my experience of loss. The symbols are, the symbols are again stylized Chinese character commonly used to wish someone a long life. There's, I don't know whether you can see how many of them, but there is a different, it's exactly the same, same character, but it's differently stylized. It's about long life. Two bats and lotus were used as well. I used the oldest symbol available when my dad was dying to dying, and then to wish that he would recover from this illness and live. This is all, this is a detailed shot of the wishing in vain. In all those wish that I put it in this work, and it became vain. So once, I don't know, I think it's all, actually the proportion is a little bit slightly look elongated sideways, but it's a little bit squashed. So I feel, it looks okay in this computer screen, but this one is, I don't think it's proportionally right. <laughs> um, once my father was gone, I wanted to find a form that virtually, uh, visually shows a notion of absence, yet uh, resonate the existence of memory. So I soldered a thousand of small rings together to create a vessel form and insert a small boat shape in the center of the vessel that hold the memory. Sterling silver, enameled, gold leaf to express the preciousness of memory. And Charles talked about uh, always research, but I guess um, I, for me, it is a solving problem. I want to visualize something that making just a little tiny bowl, I mean, silver, to make a three-dimensional form. And a lot of people who knows the metal, who knows the jewelry, how did you do this? And I just have to try many things. I thought it may work, and finally I got it. Uh, so I don't know whether that one is called research. I never really done any systematic you know, research. I just try different things in here and there, and once I got it, yeah, that's what it is. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, sorry. Oh, so I did a 
you, you guys are going to preview. I just put the wrong <laughs> button. <laughs> Pardon? How do I do this? <laughs> Instead of this, I go to totally wrong button. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Okay, that's good. That's good. Yeah, that's okay. good. Okay. <laughs> the ring uh, represents eternity and circle of life. It made. Uh, it is made as sterling silver with the black and chemically. It is about 25 centimeter wide and eight inch, eight centimeter high. It is both shape. Somehow that in death, I always assort with the uh, the uh, pick, uh, with the boat shapes. So probably that's what when I was young probably some of our culture that was always those, uh, it influenced me uh, associated with the uh, shape of boat with the death. And I made a reliquary for my heart by using delicate rings, I just repeat it again, to convey a sense of emptiness, uh, fragility and sentiment in the vessel. The inside of the red enameled ball uh, in the center is gold leafed. So inspiration of those inside was that came from seeing people praying while rubbing gold leaf onto the big Buddha statue in Thai's ten, uh, Thai temple, and I find that the act of act of rubbing and praying, I think that, that was so beautiful. So I wanted to add it on that one. So I trying to put a little gold leaf square one inside of the ball. So this body of work, Empty Vessel, led me to another stage of research. This time, it was more technical one. Even though I have managed to figure it out, the way to solder many rings to make a three-dimensional form, there was always a risk to ruin the whole thing with just one blow, <laughs> just one mistake, too much of a heat. So I wanted to find out an alternative way of holding metal together, not with glue, though that there were lots of buzz around at that time, buzz about laser welding in jewelry metal community around the early 2000s. So I will just talk about those things a little bit later, but I just move on to the next uh, stage. The first time I felt thankful for being an artist and able to release my grief through my work, though especially for Empty Vessel series. So I had worked on the Empty Vessel series for about two, year, two years and felt that I had to move on. Right after my father passed away, my mom came to Halifax to live with us for a year. And I think about the November, slightly later, yeah, November, that there was no leaf. Well, she was looking at the trees outside a window, and just simply tree still leaves again when spring comes, but human never will. That, from that day, leafless tree branches are not the same for me. I realize a gross patterns was an act of survival and adapting to their environment, and trace of their growth shown to us in the branches, especially during the winter, reveals clearly their linear character. It speaks to me about life. So while I was studying the growing pattern of a certain tree, trying to, you know, drawing and taking pictures and certain trees, certain trees visually, I was researching alternative method of soldering as well. Titled Anticipating One, I try to achieve when each vessel is a slightly different delicate gesture to express how I believe trees anticipate spring. I am drawn to the beauty and empty feeling of leafless branches during the long Canadian winters. These are still used the traditional soldering technique. And each, each ball, each vessel is very small, just about cup size you can hold in your hand. And these are anticipating two express a full color, one millimeter color, copper wire was soldered one at a time to build the foam and heat colored. This was how I felt when I walked in the forest on one very sunny winter day. And I titled this piece, Coming. It is about 46 centimeter wide. It's quite long, but it looks a little bit fatter though. <laughs> uh, and 12, inch, 12 centimeter high, and point, I use a 0.8 millimeter silver wire and gold filled wire. Um, this is the first time that I tried a little bit of those alternative material, alternative way of soldering. 
um, holding metal together. Because the center was a gold plate, if I use conventional soldering, that gold color will be all burnt. So I have to figure it out how to do that, and that was the one of the is a I use micro welding. I tried research the laser welding. I finally decided laser welder is not for me and not for type of work that I'm doing. So it's a micro welder was a good one. So I tried it, but that time every technique that I find trying to new one always need the time to develop it. So I couldn't do it whole thing, but just a little small section, only five spot. That's what I try to do. Controlled but intuitively manipulated, thousand lines create textures, presents a presence of a space and volume in my vessel. This is a longing, a silver wire, 40 centimeter high and 17 centimeter wide. It's called Dreamy and 15 centimeter wide, 12 centimeter high. While I was making these wire vessel series, I realized I am using one of the most basic visual elements, the line. Come to think of it, the main visual element of a previous series, empty vessel, was also line. It's just a circle. And delicate silver wire can create a movement um, through direction, space, volume, and texture. So unlikely yarn or pencil drawing, drawn lines, wires, tensor strengths allows me to capture the essence of movement from nature and express the abstract idea like a dreaming in this in vase structure, vessel structure. Obviously, when you are talking about trees in Canadian winter, you want to say about beauty of fresh snow, and especially on the tree. Uh, that is what I want to express in my vessel form on here. For snow-covered branch, uh, each wire was soldered for vessel form with lightly electroformed to prevent the structure from falling apart during the process of enameling. Um, this time, um, I have known that enameling on, you know, from flat surface, but I never really tried it. I didn't know that whether it can be done on just a fine, fine wire. And uh, just simply I have to try it, explore, and those things that many, many experiment with that. And also different type of, uh, different uh, temperature of glaze, uh, the enamel, and under glaze is, you know, like a sugar, they called orange peel, and many different naming things. So finally I achieved this one, which I'm really happy with that. And along with it, I have to solve so many problems. As I mentioned that this time, uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't really uh, uh, comfortable with uh, welding on the copper. So I still try, try to use a conventional uh, soldering since I use it for more than 20 years. I feel much, much comfortable with the soldering rather than welding. But then I have to solve other problem for enameling. So I did electroforming on the to use that and then enameling. So, so what I can say that development work requires a constant research, exploration, whether it is visual or technical. This is one aspect of my, I emphasize in the classroom. In many schools, I mean, nowadays, the developing concept is emphasized rather than technical design skill. That's kind of a, I don't know, the time or something, some curriculum. I, I, I am noticing a lot of those changes in cu curriculums. But I understand the importance in one hand, but I believe that it needs balance. Without proper technical skills, uh, uh, it will be hard to create or create great work, and admirable technical skill cannot create impressive work. Detailed shot of one piece in this series, Nature's Breath. White color enamel was underglazed for snow texture. Nature's Breath, 2009 and one. On the snow covered branches, I see quite motion growing. If you look at it all, you know, outside window, um, in the forest, there are always, always the, those branch, leafless branches. And uh, I see quite motion growing in harmony with the environment rather than bareness or sense of loss. I use red enamel underneath this structure as a sign of life on the snow. 
the persistence of transformation inspires an emotional response in me, and I try to interpret this response by poetically abstracting the branching form. While I enjoy the process of soldering, it will have some limits. Sterling silver as a material has a bearing on the size of a vessel due to its price. Enameled copper vessels were also restricted by the size of electroforming bath. So I haven't been, as I said, I haven't been looking for materials and techniques uh, that gives me a freedom for quite a while. I mentioned earlier that I was researching alternative method of soldering and I found a steel wire rather than silver wire. And because of the, uh, instead of a soldering, I w if I wanted to do it, uh, welding, uh, steel is the right material for that, te that uh, technique. So I chose use fine, uh, well, this is about 0.5 millimeter of steel wire. And um, steel wire and micro welding give me that freedom. This vessel is made of 0.8 millimeter steel wire for structure. And for color, I use just regular enamel. And I've just recently found that there is an enamel for specifically for steel, but I haven't had a time to really experiment yet. So maybe next time, next set of my work will be exp experiment with those uh, enamel for specifically for steel. Um, the, this size is larger, 33 by 27, 22 centimeter, and uh, I use a kiln in glass studio to enamel it because of those regular jewelry studio enamel couldn't accommodate this size. And the inherent physical characteristic of a fine steel wire allows allowed exploration of various uh, delicate structure while creating a volume space. The other one is the same, but I think it gives me a much more freedom. Freedom. Uh, in this way, I hope to impart, okay, <laughs> I said two minutes, so I'm gonna just go fast. <laughs> okay, that's the next one. So embracing 2011 and two, and still in enamel. It's about 42 centimeter high. I was asked to have a solo uh, jewelry show in 2008, uh, 2008 at Harbinger Gallery in Waterloo. And I was hesitating to say yes. Up until then, I wasn't really focally focused on jewelry. Usually it's a vessel. But I thought it is a great opportunity to me, force me to focus it. And also since jewelry is the one that I teach at school as well, so I think I can really um, it's a good experience, having a gallery experience and making jewelry experience for teaching. So obviously you can see that where the inspiration is coming from. This brooches is made with a steel wire and enamel. And I discovered while I'm working with this, and steel is very light material rather than silver. So I can make it a little bit bigger and even have creating more volume and still it's wearable and much stronger. So I'm very happy to find out that. And this is the last one. And I think I'm gonna finish it, my talk right here. Thank you.